Hey friends, Robert Imbriali here, and guess what? We are now in a new year, 2021. And I don't know about you, but I've been asking a lot of people, friends, uh, business associates, uh, neighbors that are here, I've been asking everyone this same question. Does it really feel like a new year? Does it? Or does it feel like 2020 part B, right? And I think a lot of people are sort of feeling that really nothing much has changed. Yeah, we flipped the calendar over to a new year, a new month. And uh, the truth is really nothing major has changed. And I think for a lot of people, uh, they're kind of wondering what's going to happen next. I want to bring up something that uh, I was talking to a client a little earlier today, and they were saying, you know, you're talking about a lot of things on this podcast now that are not necessarily directly related to coaching. And is that a good idea? And I say, the truth of the matter is, it is for me. And I'll tell you why. And you probably agree with me uh, that this is important because when your customers come to you and the people you're going to coach, when your clients are coming to you, they're being impacted by everything that's out there right? So our job is, number one, not to live in a bubble and and not be paying attention to it. In normal times, absolutely. You know, don't need to pay any attention to it. It is what it is. You know, there's good things out there. There's bad things out there. All that stuff. It really doesn't matter too much because there's nothing major happening. But now with, you know, the the California, for instance, where I am, uh, you know, with the lockdowns are now indefinite. There's no deadline. There's no end date uh, in sight. Some people are talking that lockdowns are going to go until 2022, maybe 2023. Um, mask wearing, probably the next five years. I mean, I'm hearing stuff like that. That, it, that impacts all of us, right? And we can't live in a bubble and try to ignore it, that kind of thing. We need to have a, an ear to what's going on. And what I encourage my coaches to do is do what I do in terms of understanding what's going on out there. The worst possible thing you can do is have one source for your media and and really know what's going on. You're not going to get that. When all the media is actually telling you the same narrative and telling the same story, you're not getting the full picture. What you need is you need varying, varying opinions or varying viewpoints so that you can make up your mind and figure out what's really going on. So I encourage you to get, you know, four, five, maybe even 10 different sources of news. I don't mean sit and watch news all day long. That's not what I'm talking about. But don't just take it as headline news is what most of us do in this country. We absorb headline news. We hear things are bad. We feel bad for the rest of the day. Well, Things may be reported as bad, may not be bad. Things that may be reported as good may not be good. There may be more to the story. You're not going to know that if you're only getting your source of news from one source. And that's not what we want to do anymore. We want to make sure that we're getting uh, as much information as possible. Because when your client comes to you, and I'm getting this a lot right now, people are calling me up. They're showing up in the office here in the studio. And they're asking me, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I like to have an informed answer, right? I don't always, I don't know what's going to happen. That's not an answer. They pay me to have answers. They pay me to help them plan for their future. And they do as well for you. You might think, well, you know, I coached them on relationship stuff and this and that. Yeah. Do you think what's going on in our society right now with the lockdowns uh, has any impact at all on relationships? Of course it does. The biggest impact for relationships is financial. Everyone's being hit financially in some one way or another. So, of course, that's going to play a role. So what you need to really pay attention to is, okay, what's going on out there? What's bad about it? Uh, What's great about it? Where are the opportunities? If there are opportunities, and there always are, where are they? See if you can find them, and you can bring those to the attention of your clients. So a good coach doesn't live in a bubble. It doesn't live in a fantasy world. I think a good coach is a realist in in a lot of ways and will look at what's going on and make the most of it. Now, in normal times, I say don't watch the media, right? It's not going to enrich you. When there isn't much going on, that's absolutely the truth. Right now, there's a lot going on that's impacting all of us, right? And when it impacts all of us, well, we have to have an informed answer because our clients are going to be asking, you know, what's going on? What do I do? How do I do it? How do I cope? And right now, uh, a lot of people are just kind of figuring this out. So if you're one of those just figuring it out, congratulations. At least you're giving it the effort it requires because it does require effort to figure out what's going on. It does require effort to figure out how in the world you're going to help your clients um, get through this and get to the next step. So a lot of the advice that I'm giving them right now is I don't really know what's going to happen. 
But from what I'm hearing, and I'm putting the pieces together from this news source and that news source, I literally get my news now from about 30 different sources just to give me a well-rounded picture of what's going on. I want to know both sides of the equation, and I figure out the common sense uh, side of it and figure out what makes the most sense. And I share that with my clients. A lot of them are shocked. They have no idea what I'm sharing with them is even going on out there because, like I said, they're getting their news uh, from one source and they're probably just getting headlines. They're not going deep on any of the stories when there's so much more uh, than the headlines these days to these stories. So they're shocked, they're surprised, they're wondering, you know, where I'm getting all this stuff. And I'll tell them, I don't hide my sources, absolutely, I'll share my sources with them. But I also tell them they don't need to be uh, involved in, that deeply in all of this. Just know that there's a lot going on right now. And no matter what, even with all the, the sources of information I'm getting, I still don't feel like I have the full picture. And I think that's true of everything. There's no possible way in a three minute, four minute report that you're gonna really understand the full breadth of whatever situation the, the reporter's reporting on. These are little condensed capsules, right? They actually call them news capsules. They're capsules. They encapsulate the, the essence of the story, if you will, but without any of the detail, without much detail, a little bit of detail, give you some texture, give you some context, and they move on. That's not really telling you the full picture. So you've got to get your news from different sources. And in your mind, you've got to kind of put all the pieces together in a way that makes sense because your clients are relying on you. Now, you might say, okay, so let's say I'm working with a couple and the couple is struggling financially. You know that's putting a lot of pressure on the relationship right now. You've got to figure out what tools you have to be able to help them so they can better communicate. And instead of working as individuals, which is a problem with a lot of couples, which is why they have so, so many financial problems, is what if they worked as a team instead? And they said, look, we're facing this problem. Let's face this problem together. Let's solve it together. They're a lot more powerful and they grow closer. The bond is actually uh, much more intense when they do make it through and they will at some point make it through, but they've got to work together. They can't work uh, against each other. They can't be looking at each other and, and blaming and blaming and blaming and blaming. There's a lot that's outside of our immediate control right now. However, there are things we can do to kind of make things a little bit easier and, and uh, make it more manageable, if you will, in terms of going forward. So I've been telling a lot of my clients, you know, pay attention to your finances, don't overspend, you know, buy the necessities, don't really go buy much else um, because it's uncertain right now, it's unstable. Until things stabilize a little bit, political instability, by the way, is the death knell for any country, not just ours, any country that goes through political instability the economy will suffer. So we know we're gonna be in for some rough times. We've got some political instability. We've got on top of that, this pandemic thing that just doesn't seem to wanna to go away. And we have a lot of division, a lot of derisive division in our society as well. And that's a challenge uh, because, you know, people, even family members are not talking to each other anymore because they're on one side or the other of whatever the topic du jour is. You know, is it you're a vac uh, you love vaccines, you hate vaccines, you love masks, you hate masks, you're a stay at home kind of person, you're, you know, screw everything, let's go out, let's go have a party. You know, there, we have so many places where we can be divided and really dangerously divided in a lot of ways. It's very deep, the division. It's not just, oh, I like blue, I like red, hey, no problem, you know, th that's not that anymore. Now it's, the gap is much wider and it's really hard to bridge that gap. So we gotta have a little compassion uh, for people who don't share our views. Uh, that doesn't mean we're gonna try to convince them. That's not really the way you wanna go. Everybody, you know, runs away when you try to evangelize and try to convince them to, uh, about something uh, that they're, they're not ready to hear. What I do is I wait for them. Now wait for them to be ready to hear it. And when they're ready to hear it, I'm more than happy to share it, but I don't volunteer it anymore. I used to. When I was younger, I would volunteer my thoughts, my opinions, my views. I would just volunteer it and I'd get slapped around a lot because they weren't ready to hear it. When they are ready, they'll listen. So hold on to that. Form your opinions. Have your opinions. Be ready to share them when somebody asks. And when they ask, you know, step up. It's time for you to share. Again, not trying to convince them. Just let me share the opinion of what I'm seeing. Let me share from the perspective of somebody who gets his news from 30 different outlets and, you know, knows both sides of the story, is hearing, you know, let me share my views from that perspective and let me share with you what I'm seeing and what's working, what's not working and where I think things are going to go. Boy, my, I tell you, honestly, my customers really appreciate that. They're really, you know, really holding on to that because I tell them things 
that to me I've been hearing about for days here, here, and here, but they haven't heard anything about. And I bring it to them and they're like shocked. They have no idea what's really going on. So if you want to be that person, and really we are in a lot of a lot of ways, we are the resource for our clients. We make sure that you know we've got the information they need when they need it. We make ourselves available to change their lives and help them. And when you do that, you know how good that feels. So we've got a lot of coaching skills. Those are really great. They're not going to go away. We're not going to lose them. We've got to kind of add a little bit to it now because we're, we're sort of in un unprecedented times. So our clients are going to be asking for things that we wouldn't necessarily share with them or we wouldn't necessarily need to talk about. Normally, I won't talk about anything that's going on in politics. I won't talk about anything that's going on in healthcare. And for years, I've been uh, deeply involved in the, the medical field uh, for a lot of different various reasons because I just, I'm just fascinated by natural health, alternative health. So I've been really big in that for many, many years. I've got a wealth of information. I don't share it unless it comes up and it's something my client um, really wants to hear about. Same thing with politics. Why in the world would I ever need to bring politics into a coaching session? Well, right now it's very divisive. Right now it's a big topic. So now I have to know. Now I have to dig in a little bit. Now I have to be prepared to share that information with my clients. So I just wanted to leave that with you today. You know, here we are, new year. You know, we flipped the calendar over and honestly, not a whole lot has changed. In fact, it in some ways feels like it's going to be rougher for a little while before it actually gets better. I'll share something with you I don't normally share with people. New Year's Eve. It was here in California. It was almost midnight, like 11.45, somewhere there, getting close to midnight. I was just lying in my bed and I was feeling the energy. And what I was feeling was this energy of really resistance, of really not wanting to go to the new year. Just, just having a lot of resistance. I've never had that. I'm always excited, you know, about the new year and, you know, we're going to flip the calendar or things are going to be better. I'm always motivated and excited. And this year, the, the energy around it was, was that of resistance. And then I started to feel very unsettled. And this lasted for several hours. It was like very unsettled, very unsure, very, you know, not really looking forward to what's coming next. I don't know what's coming next. I really I don't have a crystal ball. I do, I do actually have a crystal ball, but it doesn't really work in terms of telling me, um, you know, what's coming next. But my feeling is, my gut feeling is, it's going to be rougher for a little while before things start to improve. So I'm looking for summer, midsummer, before things really start to ramp up. That doesn't mean we, you know, go into a cocoon, close the door, don't let, talk to anybody. We're out there, we're doing our thing, we're helping as many people as we possibly can, and we're staying as strong as we possibly can, even in the face of it all, because right now is a time when new leaders are being forged, and I want that to be you as well. I want you to be strong, I want you to be strong for the people you serve, I want you to be strong for yourself, for your family, your friends, and of course, your clients as well. When you do that, You'll never, 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 never want for new clients that are going to search you out. Because right now, what is everybody looking for? They're looking for leadership. They're looking for who the leaders are, not political leaders. Yeah, there's a bit of that, but that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for who in our society is not hunkered down in fear. Who is not, you know, putting a full mask on and gloves and, you know, a hat and, and you know, taking all their clothes off when they get home and throwing them in the wash? Who is not living in that, that level of fear? Who is going out there and saying, you know what, this isn't what it's been represented. Here's what I feel about it. Here's what I know about it. Here's the information I've gathered. I am now informed. I'm not in fear anymore. Those are the people that are standing up. Those are the people that are making a difference. And I know you can do that. I know your clients rely on you for that. I know your family relies on you for that. I know your friends will rely on you for that. And you know what? It'll do really, really good for your own self-esteem. So I want to leave you with that. I know I'm a little long-winded today, but, uh, you know, take it to heart. There's a lot here to be gained. There's a lot of opportunity, even amongst all the chaos, even amongst all the challenges we're facing, there's still a lot of opportunity. I'm going to come back a little bit later this week. I'm going to give you a little bit more as things can tend to unfold. So make sure you, you know, pay attention to when the next podcast drops and, uh, uh, you know, get on that list. Subscribe to the podcast to make sure you get the next one and we'll deliver it to you as soon as it's ready. Because I have a feeling that this week's going to be rough. I have a feeling there's going to be some things that are going to be very unexpected. And uh, we want to make sure that we're ready as much as possible to be able to deal with them as they come up. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk soon.